Hello everybody. In this video we're going to be introducing some of the notation we'll be using throughout the course when it comes to sets. Now the most common sets we're going to be talking about in this course have to do with subsets of the real numbers. So uh, let's start with a very basic one. So if I use an R, and you'll notice I drew two lines instead of one. This is sometimes called blackboard font. Um, so this is how we're going to denote the set of real numbers. Now it's often going to be the case that I only want to look at say the positive real numbers or the negative real numbers or the non-zero real numbers. So I'm going to use some what I hope is a very self-explanatory uh, notation for those things. So for example, if I put r greater than zero, right, this will be Okay, I'm not going to write the set of that you could just assume for each one of them, but the set of positive real numbers. All right, and if I wanted to also include zero, then of course I can make this greater than or equal to zero, so then these would be the non negative real numbers. And if for some reason I want to exclude zero, for instance, I'm dividing by a number and I, okay, I don't want it to be zero, but it can be anything else, then I might use something like r not equal to zero. So these will be the non-zero real numbers. And don't you worry about my use of hyphens after non. All right, now there's some special subsets of the reals that we're gonna be using a lot, uh, for example, if I want the rational numbers, we're going to denote that by Q. You can think of that Q being for quotient, right? Because uh, rational numbers are, are quotients of two numbers, right? They're fractions. So this is the set of rational numbers. And of course, that is a subset of the entire set of real numbers. All right? So these are your fractions, all right? So they look like A over B, where here A and B are integers, and b should not be 0, of course. Uh, speaking of integers, we want to have a symbol for that, so we're going to use the blackboard z. z is for zollen, uh, which is German for number. So these are the integers. So when we say integers, we're talking about 0, and 1, and minus 1, and 2, and minus 2, and 3, and minus 3, and so forth. Uh, of course, maybe I don't want to have all those negatives, so I could do something like z greater than or equal to zero, and that will give me the non-negative integers. Sometimes these are called the whole numbers, although we'll, we'll usually avoid that notation, we'll usually, or that language, we'll usually just call them non-negative integers. And again, we can write things like z greater than zero, right, and these will be positive integers, or sometimes they're called the natural numbers. Uh, I don't want to dive too much into it, but yes, there's this long argument amongst mathematicians whether or not z greater than or equal to zero or z greater than zero are the natural numbers, right? So sometimes people include zero, sometimes they don't include zero in the natural numbers. Uh, the truth is you just need to say what you're doing and be consistent about it, and then it, it, it's fine. Uh, for m me personally, I will use this convention that natural numbers means the positive integers. Okay, now, uh, as I mentioned before, a lot of these things we're seeing here are subsets. Well, actually, all the things we're seeing are subsets of the real numbers. So, so we're going to want to have some notation for that, as well as uh, things like what is an element of. So uh, for example, if S is a set, um, then if I write something like A, and then I do this funny thing that looks kind of like an E, maybe, and then I write the S after it, this means A is an element of S. Okay, and uh, of course I could also have written this same funny E symbol with a line through it, and if I, and if I said that, then that would mean is not an element. All right, of S. Uh, now, 
if I have another set, so if T is a set such that every element of S is an element of T. Okay, so pictorially, this could be my graphical representation for the set S, and I know that every element of S is an element of T, so a picture looks something like this. Okay, in that case, then we write S, and we're going to use almost like a less than sign, but it's, it's curvy, right? And then we're actually going to put the little bar under it like it was less than or equal to, because it could be that S and T are the same. So we're going to write S, this symbol T, and this means, so we say S is a subset of T. All right, now it could be that we really know that S and T are not the same. Like in this picture, right, it, you know, maybe there's some elements in S and outside of S, but all in T. And you say, okay, S is really different. Okay, so in that case, so if S does not equal T, then we write, well, we use that same less than but curvy less than symbol, but we don't put the bar underneath it, just like with an inequality, right? You can say three is strictly less than five, right? So we're gonna stick with this notation that if we do not put the bar underneath, it means strictly smaller, right? It's, a, it's called a proper subset, okay? And we'll say it and say uh, S is a proper subset of T. Okay. Again, uh, much like the debate over whether zero is a natural number, there's also a debate about whether or not this symbol without the bar means proper subset or just any subset. And again, you just have to pick one <laughs> and be consistent with it. All right. In this class, uh, I use the convention that with the bar means just a subset. Without the bar underneath, that means it is strictly a, a smaller subset, right? It's a proper subset. All right, so uh, this is some of the uh, notation that we are going to need uh, throughout the entire semester. So uh, study it, make sure you know it really, really well. We're gonna use it all over the place. If you have questions, please let me know.